I'm Ari here with 6329 The Bucks Wrath at the NE District Championship event. They have an excellent robot and shooter that we have been hearing about all season on the top 25. They're here to break down their intake, shooter, wiring, and some code, and show us exactly how this machine functions. Coming up next on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Yeah, so starting with the intake, we ended on a under the bumper design, really uh, maintaining robustness throughout the entire robot. In our Alphabot, we initially decided, we initially tried a flipping intake, but we found that it wasn't going to be rigid enough and an under the bumper intake was going to be the way to go for maintaining a fixable robot that isn't going to break every other match. So, yeah. Have you made any changes to it over the course of the season? Um, we, we came up with a different bumper solution because our bumper mounting was not great at uh, our last event. But other than that, it's remained relatively... Actually, that's not true. We had we added this Lexan plate here because notes in our first event were getting stuck up here. So this deflector makes it so this intake will hit it and bounce into our serializer, even if it's aimed and like away from where it, away from where it normally would be. We also added two new belts on both sides to keep the note from getting stuck up here, as well as increasing this the ratio between our pulleys and our gearboxes to make the intake a little faster. That is really cool. Yeah. So with such an interesting intake, um, let's take it up to the next step into the shooter. So with the shooter and superstructure as a whole, we decided that the best thing we could possibly do was make it robust and reliable for all of our matches. Because if it breaks, there's nothing you can do at that point, no matter how good you are. So we decided on a high pivot one degree of freedom shooter, which as you can see up here, pivots high from a Kraken powered motor down low, which can adjust our shooter to shoot in its current stowed position, or it can flip all the way up to shoot over tall defenders, as you can see here. And the shooter itself, uh, working through the preseason, we tried very hard with so many different designs and working closely with many other teams, we finally decided on the individually spinning uh, horizontal rollers. Uh, af after our last comp, we saw that our shot wasn't always super consistent and would come out of the robot super weird and we would miss pretty often because of how it would come out. So we moved into using different points of contact on our shooter to give the note more spin, which since it's a disc, will make it fly straighter and harder. So we've extended our shooting distance with that and our accuracy. So this robot is beautiful and clean and just absolutely precise in what it's done. So tell me a little bit more about the wiring and the subsystems there. One of the major improvements we've done with this robot is how just clean the wiring is as well as we've made some improvements that may be new to us, but not new to others, as we have two can loops in this robot. One can loop is the drivetrain, so that all four swerves are connected to each other. And then the other loop is the, uh, is the shooter. So they're two separate loops to allow for us to have more utilization of the motors. And then as well as each of the swerves being their own separate can loop, we've also implemented stars so that if one swerve module is knocked out, the rest of the loop can still function, uh, still function without problem. 
as well as we've just dedicated a lot of time overall in order to make it look as clean and neat as possible. And then another innovation is that we've implemented an ethernet switch to allow us to have uh, our limelights, which is a new, another new thing for us. So how did you come to the conclusion that you needed to have like better wiring and those loops in your system? Uh, what inspired our, that? Our last robot really inspired <laughs> that. It, well, the reason that we ended our uh, playoff or our Einstein appearance a little early was the fact that one of our can wires and our swerves was touching a gear. So it was shorting out over and over again. So we really created a solution in the off season that prevented that as well as the fact that it just makes it look a lot nicer and easier to ma maintain. So with all this wiring, the subsystems, and the entire robot, it must be pretty difficult to control. So take us through a little bit of your software and your code. Uh, so for our code this year, things that we do differently, we use cardinal directions on our controller, so our driver only has to press a button and it will, uh, the robot will face in whatever direction he wants. We use this a lot for our feeding and passing in matches, and then for our shooter, we use April tag detection for only the, we don't use odometry, we only use the April tag on the speaker. We have one on our front, on the front of the robot that is used when our speaker is down in the stowed position. And then we have a limelight 3G here on the back of the robot that we use when the speaker is flipped up so you can shoot over defenders and still shoot from pretty much anywhere. For our tracking, and we basically, we took a bunch of positions on our field from different uh, distance of, distances away from the speaker and built a function with that and we use it'll the limelight will take the y value of where the april tag is on the camera and then put it an, into the function and it'll give us like where the shooter needs to be in order to make the shot very cool so this robot really took to the field week one and was just absolutely dominant from the start so what in your build season kind of led to that and how it, has it influenced your season so far? Yeah, so at the very beginning of our season, we will take pretty much all of the students on the team, uh, all 30 of them, even if their permanent job on the team isn't going to be related to building or maintaining the robot, everybody is involved in the prototyping stage. So at the very beginning of our season, we take our priority list made the day after the game reveal and then we'll make as many intakes and as many shooters and as many prototypes as possible to really narrow down the archetype that we'll want to go with for our robot. So in destroying and obliterating as many ideas as possible and as effectively as possible, we try to narrow down our robot archetype and what's going to be most competitive and what we want to do for throughout the season. So it's, it's really a matter of going through as many ideas as possible and finding out what's going to work and what's going to be the most competitive for our team. Well, that is very cool. Thank you, 6329. Good luck on the field out there, and we'll see how you guys do at this event and probably at the World Championship. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.